We now start off the afternoon session with a talk by Jared Meyer. You'll see his uh, bio in the uh, schedule that you've got with you. Uh, I'll just say that Jared is one of the most stimulating and best known people in the field of talking about new technologies, new developments uh, and the like. Uh, some of you may remember the talk he gave at Think last year, which was I think one of the highlights of uh, this event last year. Uh, and we're very glad to have him uh, back again this year and he's going to talk to us about a technology I think that you're all familiar with, uh, but which I think many of us do not realise uh, truly what a revolutionary technology it is, and that is the mobile phone. So over to you, Jared. So I wanted to start off just because it's after lunch with a rant. I mean, I guess it's a story, but pretty much I'm just going to complain. So I was trying to go down to Atlanta for another talk that I was doing like this. And I'm, I'm waiting at the airport, and I made the mistake of booking a flight with a company called Frontier Airlines. Now, think of WOW Airlines, except way crappier. So I, I saw that they had cheap fares, wanted to give them a shot. Long story short, ended up being delayed for about six hours, boarding, unboarding planes. I got so frustrated that I decided to take out my phone and tweet to all my 20 followers about how much I don't like Frontier Airlines. Literally, I know, within 30 seconds, I have a reply from the airline letting me know what's going on. I keep complaining. They keep saying, oh, we know we're so sorry, we're so sorry, giving me more information than the people at the gate. I finally do make it down to Atlanta, and the next morning, I check my email, and Frontier fully refunded my flight, plus gave me enough of a credit that I used it for a round trip down to Mexico later that year. Let me just say, this would not have happened a decade ago. The difference is that today, because of technology, all of us, consumers, have more information in our hands than we ever did in the past. And I want to talk a little bit by using these changes that we've seen in technology to bring up what that means for regulation and what that means for the future of all of you working and also as consumers. So first of all, when there's any transaction, think of it as three distinct parts. So you have the buying decision. That's what all of you as consumers control. You have the selling decision that businesses have, and then you have all that information about a product or service. Now, in the past, this information was controlled or at least heavily influenced by businesses. So businesses had the scales weighted down towards their side because they had the information. Now, because of technology, because of the smartphones in your pockets, that scale has entirely flipped. The information is in the hands of consumers now. And the entire idea of regulation when it comes from the government, when it's about protecting consumers, is to correct, and I'm, going to, I'm sorry for using economic terms, but I'm only going to use two this whole time. The first one is asymmetric information. And what that is, is again, when that information balance was tilted towards businesses. But now think about it. I, I looked up, I actually found this. They have a London uh, Food Standards Agency or something in the UK. Uh, when any of you were finding a place to go out to eat last night, is that the website you went to to figure out where to go? No. You went to Google. You went to Yelp. You went to any of these services. You talked to your friends on Facebook to see what kind of restaurant you wanted to go to. It's all about this information that consumers are able to bring now, and that's what people are using, rather than relying on government regulators to signal quality. And what we've seen is this has changed the nature of trust completely. If we go back, let's say, a couple hundred years, people would really only trade with their close communities because that's who they could trust. Afterwards, we had a revolution where it brought about these large central agencies like banks, governments, that were able to then do, expand trust to a larger area. Now what we're seeing is we're in the middle of the peer-to-peer -peer revolution where trust comes from the uh, reviews that we're able to get from other people and the information that we're able to access online that's all at our fingertips. And what we're going to see is this trust is going to continue to change with things like blockchain and ledger technologies, where we're going to be able to have this perfectly verified. So it's a constant change, but what we've seen is our regulations are built for that area with the large intermediaries that had to go between uh, consumers and businesses. So the first part of what we've discussed is asymmetric information and now how information is all in the hands of consumers. To just show you one more time, I mean, did any of you, have any of you taken an Uber this week? If you notice that there's a rating system afterwards, that's what I'm talking about with this information, where you're able to communicate with other people, or when you go on Amazon, how you figure out what you want to buy. It's about peers, your other consumers, showing their information through the internet. So that's one thing that technology is substantially changing. But another thing, and this is the second economic term I'm going to use, is transaction costs. Think about transaction costs as all the time, 
energy, effort, you know, cost that it takes to complete a trade. Now, transaction costs were usually high, uh, but what's happened now is because of the smartphone revolution, because of all the information in our hands, and just because of the internet in general, transaction costs have fallen more than they ever have in the past. So think about it, uh, using Uber again. I wouldn't advise this, but you could just go up to different people's cars, knock on the window, ask them where they're driving, and ask if you could tag along for a little bit. Then you'd have to figure out how much you're gonna pay. You'd probably want their, uh, some references to make sure they weren't gonna kill you. You'd, it was possible to do ride share. I mean, it was hitchhiking before, it was a thing. But what's happened is because of the internet now, the transaction costs have fallen so much that this has become a part of people's everyday lives. And we're seeing this all over the economy. And it also translates to how people are going to end up working. This isn't just for consumers. But now, when transaction costs were high, the Nobel Prize winning economist Ronald Coase talked about why we had to have these large multinational firms where everyone works for a company. It's because it was simply too costly to go out and find the right expert for every single job. But today, what we've seen is a massive shift towards being able to work for yourself. This is the kind of empowerment that comes from being able to reach new technologies. Another example I'm gonna use just to show you what the difference yeah, can happen because of the internet revolution uh, is using an example of my mom. So when I was growing up, she would make these mittens. I, I don't know, I think that's what they're called in the UK. I've discovered all these words since I've been here that I think are what they mean, like lollies, what are those? I didn't know. <laughs> they're called suckers in America, okay? That's the right word. Uh, but anyways, she'd make mittens out of these old sweaters. Uh, and then she'd go and sell them at craft fairs. I mean, maybe on a good weekend, you could sell a dozen, 20, you know, something like that. Sure, it, it was great. It's a little way to make some money, to have some fun, meet some people. But let's say she wanted to scale up that business. Think about how difficult it'd be to advertise, to find customers, to grow her small business into something that could support our family. But now, if she was doing this today, think of all the options. Not only eBay, which has been around since 1995, but has grown, but Etsy, a market for online, you know, or for handmade goods that you can reach theoretically anyone in the world. This is going throughout the entire economy where now all these smaller entrepreneurs can build up their businesses by reaching more people. And it's because of lower transaction costs. And the reason, bringing back that other economic term, asymmetric information, by correcting that through information online, customers are now able to trust people again outside of that small circle that you were confined to in the past. So I think the best way to understand technology is that it drastically expands someone's social network. Your reach is much further, both as a consumer with your power, but also as a business person. I mean, think about it. Social media, it's a lot like word of mouth. Like, you go back to that flight example I used when I took Frontier Airlines. 10 years ago, I could have maybe you know, called my wife and complained to her. So my reach is about one person. But now, with my 20 people on Twitter, a real opinion maker, it's really that social media is word of mouth on steroids. And companies are more worried of this kind of interaction with their, uh, with their consumers than they were with uh, even a negative report from a regulator. So how should all this change the way that regulators look at new technologies and look at their role? The first thing is, I think they just have less of a role now because regulation doesn't only come from the government. Going back to the theme we talked about earlier, regulation can be driven by consumers and it is being driven by consumers today. Another thing they need to look at is sure, there's still a role for a lot of government regulation on certain topics, but think about if consumers can benefit from this in, do, in something that they do with, let's say, low risk and low cost. So using Uber again, an Uber ride, it doesn't cost very much, and it's not really that much of a risk if something ends up going wrong, if you get brought to the wrong destination. And social science research has shown over and over again that in little games like this that are low risk and low cost, humans are very rational. We're able to take the time to go and look at Google reviews to figure out what restaurant we want to go to. But on things like brain surgery, that doesn't happen very often, costs a lot, and there's very high risk, that's a much better role for regulators. So I want them to, instead of thinking that every time a new technology comes about, they need to get their hands on it, think about which things are high risk, high cost, and very rare, because that's where there's a much better argument for regulators stepping in. The other point is regulators need to encourage this ability to work for yourselves, using my mom's mitten example, or just any of the entrepreneurs and independent contractors and workers who are now driving all the growth. I know in the US, at least, since the year 2000, 
all of the growth in work has come from people who work for themselves as independent contractors. The number of employees is actually slightly down in the US since the year 2000. And you've seen a similar trend throughout the rest of the world because it's become more easy to have a flexible schedule where you are your own boss. What's happening though is a lot of government regulation was written for what I call my grandfather's workforce where you graduate school, you go and work at a company for 30 years, and you'd have, you know, you'd have to punch a time card when you got in, and you reported to someone. This is entirely changing now, and I think a lot of our labor regulations need to move to be able to accommodate this new style of work. So again, I only used two economic terms here, but I'd like you to try to remember them. Asymmetric information, because this is important, because consumers truly have more power now than ever before, and that brings the entire idea of, uh, consumer protection regulation into question, and transaction costs. Because transaction costs affect everything in the economy. And as they continue to fall lower and lower, not only are you going to have more opportunities, but you're going to have more power as a consumer as well. Uh, so I would like regulators just to understand that as they continue to try to respond to these new technologies and the smartphones that you see in your pockets, they need to realize that entrepreneurs are the true people who can drive the economy forward, not regulation. And just to highlight this, I'd like all of you to look at your phones. This is weird asking people to look at their phones while I'm talking, but what I'd like to see is, do you see any apps that you use regularly that aren't American? Or what percent aren't American apps? Just think about it in your head. I went through my phone and I have one, Spotify. This was not an accident that American companies ended up dominating the smartphone revolution, that they owned the first really two decades of peer-to-peer -peer growth over the internet. It's because we made an explicit decision in America to practically not regulate the internet. This is all changing now, and as Matthew was talking about earlier when he was discussing drones, the UK is stepping in when now the US is deciding to over-regulate a new technology. So this isn't going to just happen on accident. While I think entrepreneurs are able to drive the economy forward, when regulators realize that more information is better for consumers and better for workers, they're able to take a lighter touch, and that's how you've been able to get all the different apps on your phone. But I want to wrap this up so we can get to a lot of questions, because there's a lot of topics I hit on. Uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing what you have to say. And just so you know, I have a new short mini book on uh, different technologies and how some so-called progressive governments are fighting against what I think are very progressive services. Uh, anyone who asks a question gets a free copy during my uh, mini book signing, which will be after uh, Dr. Davies talks. So just come up to me afterwards and I'll give you a free copy then. But looking forward to seeing what you have to say. Thank you.